because it's genuinely mm -hmm. the best day you've ever done. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hi guys, Sophia here. Welcome to another Thread Daily. I'm the fashion and beauty editor here at Thread and I'm here to talk a little bit about why diet companies promoting post-isolation body weight loss is triggering. So a couple of weeks ago, I was scrolling through my Instagram feed and I came across an ad from Slimming World which said something along the lines of, if you're concerned about putting on weight in quarantine, now's the best time to get back into the driving seat. Now, while I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with wanting to look your best or, you know, keeping up a healthy exercise regime, even eating healthy foods, I do hold a little bit of criticism towards this kind of marketing, particularly given that the pandemic has brought about, unfortunately, a new kind of fat shaming. First, there were the memes. So at the beginning of lockdown, I remember scrolling through social media and coming across a lot of memes complaining about weight gain in quarantine. Things saying, you know, quarantine 15, um, people just basically worried about the fact that with nowhere to go, they would be putting on weight. Then there were the challenges, again, on platforms like TikTok and Instagram with users promoting extreme dieting, extreme exercise regimes, obsessive exercise regimes, things that are just very triggering for people with eating disorders for example and now if that wasn't enough diet companies are banking on these concerns to make money so what this really comes down to is toxic marketing methods that don't really seem to have any ulterior motive other than to exploit our health fears to put this into perspective a random sampling on social media showed that 80 percent of all diet companies are currently using post isolation weight gain to shift products the problem isn't so much what they're selling but it's the way in which they're going about doing so playing on the fact that we might be having guilty thoughts at the moment and using this in aggressive trim down pep talks is actually incredibly harmful especially for those with pre-existing conditions such as anorexia or bulimia rather than actually wanting to help they're essentially trying to capitalize on our concerns about post isolation weight gain amidst the current mental health crisis that's come about as a result of our social media habits I'm actually incredibly baffled to be seeing so much of this through my screen and I'm having to remind myself daily of what actually matters. A motivation to look your best isn't a bad mindset to have at all. But is the messaging that they're promoting really necessary? Would it not be better therefore to place emphasis on non-scale victories such as the fact that nutritious foods and regular exercise can actually reduce and combat stress and anxiety? Diet companies really ought to distance themselves from disseminating language in favour of compassionate phrasing because telling us to try and meet these arbitrary body standards doesn't really have anything to do with real wellness whatsoever and it's just not beneficial. There's always going to be a possibility that we might look a little different after an unstoppable virus changed the world as we know it overnight but that really shouldn't be our primary concern. Using food to cope in an uncertain situation is perfectly natural, and we shouldn't be made to feel lazy or self-critical for practicing a little bit of self-care during a time when, honestly, everything felt a bit weird. I'd like to finish with a quote by clinical psychologist Paula Friedman that I really try and remember every day, and that is, when you stop convincing yourself that the body is the problem, the problem is solved. Thanks so much, guys. Um, if you liked this daily, then you can head over to our website and read the article about it and just check out our content on there because generally it's pretty fab. Uh, also, remember to like this and subscribe and check us out on all socials. Have a great day. Bye. Whoa, that God, good? that ending just nailed it. Okay, can I just get you to clap? Cool. Okay. Thank you very much. I'd like to leave you with a quote from clinical psychologist, I've forgotten her name. <laughs> I'd like to finish with a quote by clinical psychologist Paula Friedman, who said, I don't what know what she said. <laughs>